this video, we're going to work off of a Gaia preset. We're going to isolate elements within the landscape to export as stamp meshes. Those are going to be imported into Unity to be placed using the Terrain Tools brush module. Then we're going to export that raw file, importing it back into Gaia to texture it and to work as a base terrain. So to begin, let's work with our stock messes and do's Gaia preset. We're going to uh, remove what we don't need. We don't need two mountains. And we're going to transform this back to center. So I'm going to change the X position to zero. And I'm wondering why it's not It's bugging. Sometimes you'll get bugged nodes that'll really frustrate you because you don't know that it's really bug bugging. You just won't. You'll overlook it until you see a problem later. So let's go with another transform. And what we're going to do is change to 75%. That's going to shrink it relative to what it was before. Um, that way we can scale it with more precision in Unity with its scaling uh, for the mesh. And then from here, we're going to, uh, I'm going to reference my settings here, clamp 10%. So on the clamp process for transform is fine. We're going to put 10% as the minimum. And that's going to raise the baseline up. And then we can feed it to wizard. And in this case, we're not going to combine it with dunes. You can if you want to have uh, a particular pattern on the landscape like for example if you've added where the dunes are oriented based upon the way the air currents work if you're really tricky uh, but in this case we're going to do a simple stamp we're going to stamp the mountains or stamp the dune and then place the mountains on top of the dunes so for simplicity so from wizard we'll go zero borders now that we've raised 10% of our baseline, if we if we give it a zero border value, you'll see that it that's what 1% looks like. The Gaia world space isn't to the top of the thing. It's actually whatever you set it to in terrain definition, which is 2600 here. Uh, so it's a mostly empty space. So for zero borders, uh, let's change Margin 18, power 20, power 10. So what that does is that gives us uh, a bit of grace when we're placing, if there if we don't have it perfectly precise, it'll give us a rounded over edge, a radius, so that if we're, if the clamp has raised the terrain too high, it's not going to give us a 90 degree cliff. Uh, we don't, we can still dial it in. Um, so for this one, this is ready to go, and uh, we'll go to measure is our final output. This is an output node, so you don't have to mark it for output, and we'll just mount that, mark that mountain. Okay, for our dunes, uh, we're going to go, uh, we're actually going to give it a 1% clamp minimum and then we're going to do zero borders and that's going to be precise uh, the settings I have here is actually square and three margin and what else have I got here okay uh, so now that we have that, if you want to change the dunes from this, uh, maybe we want taller dunes, we can do that. And at this point, we can change to 1K resolution. So there's our dunes. That's kind of stylized. Maybe we won't raise it so high. And maybe soften the peaks. If you're suspecting your dunes are bugged, 
Let's start over. Okay, there's some dunes. I'm going to work with that. We're going to come off of zero borders. And we're actually going to, as you can see, it, it, it blends it toward the edge. What we're going to do is reduce that effect in half by going output to output of our dune to our zero border output. And that gives us a 50-50 blend by default. So it's just, it reduces the effect of zero borders. Okay, and then from here we'll go to measure. And I guess I need to change, that's the only one I tend to change. If you try to change vertex count, you're not going to get more detail because it's it, it seems to be that the community version, which I'm using the free version, um, is, since it exports height maps at 1K, I believe it, it prevents too many vertexes as well. So there we go, and we will rename dunes. I'm going to change resolution to 1K. Raw. And let's make a new version of our desert terrain. We're going to go into Unity. I have the scene set up, ready for us. I'm going to go ahead while that's building create a terrain object and in the settings I'm gonna go to height map resolution of 4k okay and I'm using terrain tools which is the package in the, in the unity package registry and if you're it, you can install it for 2020 but I realize that it does not have the stamp control tool, uh, stamp tool controls module in it so you might have to use 2021 or later and we have our meshes finished bacon import those okay um, so we're gonna start with dunes first drag our the mesh itself into the mesh field and you can see what we have it's a little too aggressive so let's change to six height. That looks a little better. And let's print some dunes. So to go in and look quicker, maybe we'll set up our camera at a low angle. And that's what we have. Let's go ahead and place a couple of mountains. So one thing to, to, to witness is if, as you might have t could tell, the there's a you can you can see on the the square shape that it fades. It fades within the scale. Sometimes you can move the fade outside of the scale. If you see, but then that's going to clip it in a way that's um, that's less lenient for placement so if if you're seeing that hard edge you just might not have to work with the scale depending on what you're working with but that's going to change you know the feature scale of what you're doing so I, I think this one worked out pretty good with two 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 and a height of six all right let's go for our mountains now one thing about this tool is it doesn't really allow you, not that I've found, to save a brush uh, per se. You, you kind of have to fiddle with the settings as you move between them. So let's go up to 111, or actually the other way, to get the scale of the feature we want. This is one kilometer large, so I'm going to see if I can get away with 444. It's not clipping. So we can place these. I 
Now, one thing that I'm witnessing, it, it may or may not be a problem, is that there, it's not really showing the skirting around the mesh. We may have to raise it a little. And what I'm talking about, let's go back. If you can see this debris, that sort of, you know, erosive layer that extends beyond the height map. I think we might want to have that. So I'm going to bump this value to 12. And let's see if that fixed, if that gave us more of, of, the, of the features around the base. Okay, here's version 2. It's ready to go. Drag that into the scene. So this is what we had already. If I can get into a better vantage point. See what I'm doing. Yeah, you can tell it's flat around the base. So let's see if this one did any better. Oops. Did we export our mountains? Yeah, sometimes you have to actually select the node, otherwise it'll uh, cancel midway. That's not what we wanted. There we go. There's our mountain. So let's drag our mountain in. We didn't actually change our dune settings. So let's drag our new mountain mesh. It might have given us a little bit more. Let's bump it up a little more. Say clamp man, let's say 15. And go for that. Okay, we're done baking. Let's bring our new mountain in. It should be mountain two here. That's what we have already. Let's go to mountain two. And it's hard to tell. I think it's I think it's trying to work. We may have to go aggressive. Uh, a previous setting that worked for me was 20. So let's check out 20. And our zero borders is still rendering. Okay, that one's done baking. Let's bring would be mountain three into position. So this was mountain two. Mountain three, there we go. Now we're starting to see a lot more. Let's see how that works. I'm going to control Z and remove these mountains. And let's place mountain three. Now we have some clipping, so we need to adjust our scale. There we go. That looks intact all the way around. Okay, but what, what, what I'm seeing there is that lip. If you can see it, well, you just see it right there, that line. So it may mean a factor below 20. That was a big jump from 15 to 20. So let's go to 18. But instead of doing that, what we can do is just scale it down one more. So if we go 222, two, two, we might hit our fade zone. It looks like it, that might have helped. But if our mountain's too small, we're going to have to make our brush bigger. But if we make our brush big, it flattens it out. So we'll have to actually raise the height to give us the size that we're looking for. So there we go. It looks like we have the skirting and we have that faded edge. It's There's still an edge there. So maybe it's worth, if we really want to dial this in, uh, let's go ahead and change. Yeah, we went to 18. Let's just go to 17 to be um, perhaps certain. And let's save this. 
All right, this is done bacon. I'm going to bring in our new mountain. This will be version four once it loads. Okay, so let's bring four in. I'm going to control Z to remove that one mountain. Now what's good about that mountain, you can still use it and they just need to be, uh, the, the, the height will need to be set based upon that base level of where, right before it falls off. And then you can imprint it and it won't display that shelf. Um, but let's see how this works. I'm going to go to scale one and there is some skirting and there's not a whole lot of detail so I think it might have been it needs to be a value of like 18 or 19 but I think you get the general gist of dialing it in I'm going to scale this up until it's starts clipping and that, that one actually looks pretty good that's actually larger than I wanted so let's bring a brush size down and when you adjust the brush size, we got to adjust our height too. Otherwise, it'll be disproportionate. We're going to place a couple of these from different perspectives. Okay. So now that we have our desert world, what we can do is export this as a raw file export this as a raw file and I just closed it uh, right here I'm just going to save it in here and we can overwrite then in Gaia what we can do is actually we can either start a new project or we can use the file node and bring in that image. Okay, and there it is. That's what we created in Unity from stamps created in Gaia, brought it back full circle. And now you can work as a base terrain. A quick visualization is to go to texture node And we're gonna to have to mark this as underlay. And then sat map. And there we have a textured and colored terrain. You know, have fun with it. Create masks to colorize the rock differently than the dunes. But that's a good starting point if you feel limited somehow in the way uh, of placing elements in Gaia. Um, Good luck. Give me any questions that you have. Show off your work and we'll see you in the next video.